That lizard isn't Yale's doctor. Not the smartest cookie in the jar, nor the most tactful. But do I trust him? No. Do I consider him a friend? Yes. I hope he never feels inclined to hit me. He's twice my size. He's been training with those same shorts for who knows how long. Hey, Jake. Not now, John. All right, that's enough. <clears throat> Take five. Go on. What, John? What's so important? Have you noticed anything strange about Sonia? I don't know. Yesterday she said she hated the gym. But it also seemed like she wanted to save the place. Do you get any of this? I sure don't. It might not have seemed that way, but she loved her dad. Believe me, I've got reasons to be certain. Why are you coaching that guy? Oh, that's right. You don't know. Sonia asked me to run the gym. Well, at least the fun part. As soon as Bobby yells back on his feet, I'll turn him into a champ. I'll make him crush stone. Just you wait. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Is it the first time you coached anyone? Yeah, but uh, you think I can't do this, don't you? Well, screw you. We'll win that fight. Could you tell me where O'Leary's headquarters are? Uh, what for? No, no, no. You could get me into trouble. No way. You lied to me yesterday, and being the good friend that I am, I kept your secret. You owe me. I don't think I'd keep protecting you if we weren't friends. Although, if we were friends, you wouldn't hesitate to help me. Tell me, Jake, are we friends or not? Damned cat. All right. O'Leary's hideout is in the basement of a Chinese restaurant. But I don't even know how to get in. Well, I'll see you tonight. Wait, were we supposed to meet? Of course. Your place, 11 p.m. See you there. Ronald, the break's over. After 30 hours of work and several beatings, every bone in my body ached for a bed. Now it's my turn. So I went home to recharge. <clears throat> because the night ahead was bound to be promising. What do you know about that basement? Well, let me think. Nothing? Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. Strain that little boxer brain. You must know something. I've come to get O'Leary several times. 
but they always make me wait in the dining room. One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let them know I was here. A few minutes later, O'Leary came out the back door, that red one there. All right, you stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. Let it ring twice and hang up. Got it? Screw you! A promising night indeed. Would he even notice if I got in? <laughs> Stupid rabbit. I'm guessing it lights up when they ring at the main door. Stupid duck. Does he need a shotgun to deal with suppliers? Maybe it leads to the basement. Could it be an elevator shaft? How does this thing open? If only I could reach that box. What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? There's a trap door on the ground, right by the restaurant. Does that sound familiar? Huh? The, the restaurant or the trap door? Okay. Forget it. Are you done? What do you think? There's a guy watching TV inside the restaurant. A red panda, I think. Doesn't ring a bell. I don't recall any panda waiters. What's taking you so long? You want to switch places? I'm going to take another look. Keep your eyes peeled. I need your brute force, Jake. Uh, what's wrong? Is the little kitten too, uh... And your silence. when it's far too late.
Oh, no, 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 not now! Some answers only come to you when it's far too late. <gasps> Who's there? Good thing the TV was louder. some frozen body. Does O'Leary have a network of pals? I didn't realize you could place so many bets on a single baseball game. It looks like a 
summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute. Did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? A little thingamajig that adds on its own. What'll they think of next? Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. Hmm. Sixteen days until the fight. Could that be Ireland? I'd say that's Ireland too. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't possibly be the exception. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about $20,000 in a drawer. A crossler? The good news is, I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. Ireland, of course. This guy's obsessed. become the object of O'Leary's obsession. The painting concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? the Yale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by knockout. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks.
Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend, the incorruptible police commissioner? To be honest, if Smirnov had anything to hide, I'd rather not know about it. Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war, which he came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. Limited edition copy two of three. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Yale is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. Luckily or not, files N through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. Dunn's integrity was legendary, even in O'Leary's shady reports, just like Yale had said. Dunn had kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym when he found him snooping around.
The report on Yale's father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why? Cassidy's report was possibly the longest among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, their rivalry went way back. So much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager's union. Strange as it may seem, the reports reveal that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career. Jake. Someone was coming. Are we or are we not exemplary workers, Jake? Here it is, middle of the night. And we're working extra hours. What do you think about that? I think he's scared stiff, Desmond. <laughs> Why's that, Jimmy? We're giving you the red carpet treatment. We even let you in the boss's office. You're one lucky fellow. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, very well. Uh, why are you... Shh. C calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, 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 three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. And tell me, what about... You, Wilson, what would you do? No, please, please, please. I didn't do anything, I swear. He was a good guy. <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? <laughs> 
was my cousin. I. That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job. And you needed the money. And I, I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh, you know what? I talked to her just yesterday. She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? <laughs> She's lying. Why would I do that? What about the kid? <laughs> Are you so sure you know how long a kid can hold his breath? With his little head inside a toilet bowl? Son of a bitch. I didn't want to. It was his idea. Selfishly, I was glad I hadn't risked my life to save Jimmy. Maybe not even someone like him deserves to die. But one could also argue that I didn't deserve to die for someone like him. Who's your boss? Give me a name! Cassidy. It was his idea. He said you'd hired me if I'd managed to scare the widow, and I just... All right, all right. Let's just... Calm down now. It's gonna be okay. There are two sacred principles that rule my life. The first principle the love for my family. I'd do anything to protect them. The second principle, I never put my future in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I would even add a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two crucial principles, I take matters into my own hands. You see where this is going? For the first time, I got someone killed. Even though all I really did was rat him out. No, I, no, 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 I just... Stop I, interrupting I, me, Jimmy! No. It's not polite! Sorry. They're all the same. So rude! You know what? Let's leave it at that. You're going to give a message to that disgusting walrus Cassidy, aren't you? Yeah, 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 sure. Whatever you say. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Good boy. What? 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 what, what, what what's the message? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. You still don't get it, do you? You are the message. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Good. Come on. Wrap him up. Make sure Cassidy gets the message for breakfast, will you? I hope he chokes on it. Got it. Hmm, where are you hiding, little fishy? Once again, you didn't get to hear the end of my story. Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is the love I feel for my family. The second is 
Never leave destiny in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I'd even add a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two principles, I take matters into my own hands. The first time that someone died because of me, even though all I did was rat him out, well, that guy ended up in the Hudson River, right off Pier 27. He's got to be even wetter than that fish by now. You should have seen his face. It's interesting what comes to mind when you think you're about to die. Suddenly all I could think about was how much I wanted a pet fish. You too, Anyway, I was 14 years old, and I still dream about it. But it will By then, I was adamant about buying a fish. But first... That was that. Never again. Nowadays, whether it's me who pulls the trigger or not, I have zero regrets. What's more, I sort of enjoy it. In case anyone had any doubts about who's the boss around here, I'll put my dirty feet on his luxurious table to prove that all of this is mine. His pupils are dilated, and there's a slight grin on his face. The bastard is enjoying himself. The guy never hesitates to pull the trigger. Even if I hadn't seen what he did to Jimmy, I'd know he's not bluffing. When a mob boss declares his love of family, it can only mean that a, he won't hesitate to ruin yours, and B, he's cheating on his wife. I knew I had it in me to get out of that place alive. O'Leary's wife is having an affair with Colbert? Should I serve this to O'Leary on a silver platter? Or threaten Colbert so he'll get me out of this mess? And, well, that's it, I think. <laughs> you know, Black Sad, I never made it this far. Congratulations, you're going in style. I didn't want to interrupt you because I respect you and your word. Colbert told me to come here. What? Me? No way! You did what? Colbert? When? Uh, well, uh... <laughs> yeah, remember? When I called you on the phone. Don't you remember that cocky drunk guy? Uh, no. He kept bragging about betraying his own boss. Oh? Oh yeah! Weird times, huh? Yeah, and you congratulated me for finding Yale and saving your life. Several times! Then you assured me that O'Leary would thank me. Well, I didn't put it that way, but yeah! And then you told me to come here to ask the boss himself. Yeah! I think you deserve it! Right, Desmond? Oh. Black sad, black sad, black sad. Thank you. And sorry for jumping to conclusions. First, you get a random beating from Wilson. And here we are. When you shared what you'd found in Yale's apartment, well... It made me sort of want to trust you. But as you well know, you can't trust anyone in this world. Take it. It's only fair.
Thanks. I'll make good use of it. <laughs> A word of advice. Make bad use of it. It's more fun. Oh, Black Sad. Aren't these odd hours to pay me a visit? Your message was important, but certainly not urgent. It could have waited until tomorrow, don't you think? We cats and wolves hunt at night. I wish I was a noir fiction writer. At this very moment, I could write a couple of pointed, ironic remarks for the narrator to recount what I just lived through. The dark, crooked alleys of New York reminded me of the state of my own soul. Hmm. No. Fall loomed over me with the fall struck me with the full force of my long-lost youth. Nah, not that. Fall descended on me with the full weight of a guilty conscience. God, that's worse. Wants him alive. Uh, I felt fall seep uh, through my bones like the pain of a good beating. <laughs> Mediocre, but appropriate. 